Being open in our development means giving journalists unprecedented access to our development and the team. It was this approach that led to a very special opportunity. Back in September, official PlayStation magazine got in touch to see if it would be possible to come and talk about Hellblade. We saw this as an opportunity to see how being totally open with the press would work. So it was at Gamescom this year when I realised that we had to feature Hellblade in official PlayStation magazine. This was a chance to see a title right at the beginning and to tell a story for our readers about how a game comes together from a blank page. I introduced Matt to the team and let him talk to anyone and see anything that we've been developing. Nothing was out of bounds. So before I travelled over to Ninja Theory, I was expecting to write maybe a two-page news story on the game, but as the hours ticked by and I saw more of the game, I spoke with more of the team, it became quite evident that we needed to go bigger. That by the time I walked out of those doors, I knew it was going to be a feature, and quite possibly our subscriber cover game as well. Being the featured game on a magazine cover is a very special achievement. Not just because your game will jump out at each and every reader, but also because it shows real faith in your game from the editor. It's really quite rare that you get an all access pass to a game this early on. I had pages and pages of notes, I had about four hours of interview content. It became very clear that the only way that we could handle this for the magazine is to not impose any restrictions on what we were going to write. We had to just write what we had, tell the story and then worry about how it was going to fit into the magazine afterwards. So after two solid days of writing we ended up with a 12 page feature. Now at this point we already knew that we wanted it to be a subscriber cover but we thought what would make it extra special is if we approached Ninja Theory to design us some bespoke artwork that only our subs would get. It was great to hear the news from Matt and we started work on the cover art straight away. When we were looking for ideas for the cover art, we were looking at what made Sonoa such a, an iconic character. We were looking at how striking she was, um, the face paint, her hair. Um, we tried to get the hair kind of to frame the image and, and obviously the, the use of the sword. So the first step for us was to gather some reference images for the, the pose and the composition of the shot. Um, the sketch they provided us was a good start, but we felt that we could explore it further. It was really a case of now which kind of personality of Senua and which tone do we want to sell within the cover. Something that feels kind of evocative but, but deadly in the composition, but also the fact that the back is to the viewer, so it's a bit more mysterious. There were many strong options to choose from, and we chose the one that captured her nature the best. It showed her as being wild and aggressive, whilst maintaining her insular nature. Ever since our 100th issue, we've been making different covers just for our subscribers. But what makes this issue even more special is that it's the first time we've had artwork created specifically and exclusively for those subs. With the composition decided upon, it was up to Stu to match the pose of the mock-up in Maya. So armed with the kind of mock-up reference image in, in the 3D scene, um, we were able to set up a camera that kind of had the composition of the cover. And then it was a case of um, basically adjusting Senua's um, posture until we felt comfortable that the, the pose was good and um, it was getting, giving us everything that we wanted. And so the next phase is getting that into the game engine and doing some renders that, that are fully lit and look, look amazing. With the right pose, the next step was for Mark to paint over the render for the final piece. So up until this point the conversation had only been about the subscriber cover. We actually had something else lined up for our main cover, but just to satisfy my curiosity I asked our art editor to drop the key art for Hellblade onto the wallet and the moment that he did that I think we all looked at each other and realised that this had to be the way forward. Hellblade was not just going to be our subs cover but our main cover as well. When Matt told us that Hellblade was going to be the cover for both editions of the magazine we were absolutely thrilled. To have a cover feature this early on in development is almost unheard of. It's great to see our work displayed so prominently and also suggest that our open approach to development is being noticed by the fans but also by the press.